Good afternoon, everyone. I am here in Pai, Thailand. Uh, this morning was so cold. Uh, luckily, the clouds just fizzled away and now the sun is back out. So if you get a chance to come here for a meditation retreat, please feel free to come visit. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about the topic of balance. And one of the things that people are concerned about or the topic that comes up time and time again is how do you develop a work-life balance? But for me, I wanted to take this topic and go a bit broader or more macro. I feel like if we address it from a bigger perspective, this issue will fall into place. So on a bigger scale, what do we need to look at? And for me is how do you actually balance a material life and also a spiritual life. And these two realms, once you understand it, will give you a knowledge or understanding of how to move forward. One of the things that people struggle with so much is how do I integrate these two things? And to answer this question, we first need to understand the theory. People don't even understand that we live in two different worlds. So again, bear with me and I'll uh, give an overview quickly. But the first thing and why people are struggling is we need to understand the material world. And in the material world, in this physical world, the goal is a bit different from the spiritual world. And the goal of this world really is coming back to survival. Everything that we do is trying to extend our lineage, our survival, our family name, our status. So that's why we can see that for all humans, we want to uh, do the best we can to pursue our uh, sustainability. And sustainability is in terms of financial state sustainability. So we try to uh, do what we can to get the best job, to make the most money. Then we try to find a partner so we can have children with and it, uh, to again, continue that lineage. Also then we're trying to get a house for our safety and also so we have that roof over our heads. We try to go after the status, we try to gain education, we try to, like I said, get the best job, the best partner, the best friends, and this period or this phase is just about acquiring and getting things. And it comes back to, again, safety and survival. So it fills this need and it fills this goal. Is there an issue with doing all this? And the answer is no, because we need to. This is just part of the survival uh, phase and we all need to address this issue. So again, not judging your lifestyle or not trying to convince you of anything, but simply to acknowledge that there is a material world, there is a physical world that we need to uh, take care of as well. That's one part of us. Then on another side that many people may lack this part or may not understand too much that the need has to be met as well. And this part of every human being is the spiritual side. Everything outside of your five senses. So in the material world, what we're focusing on is regarding sustainability and our livelihood. Then in this spiritual world, what we're focused on is purity. So when we talk about purity and we talk about the spiritual life, then it has its own needs. It has its own requirements that it's after. And in this space is we want to come back to be grounded. We want to come back to being present. We want quiet and solitude and meaning and purpose. And for us is we just want a peace of mind. We want to connect with a higher purpose or a higher power or um, something that gives us faith 
and also to help us develop that spiritual life that money that a house that things or people cannot fulfill but this goes a bit deeper so these two worlds must go hand in hand why people struggle so much is because they keep going back and forth and not even knowing that you're living in these two realms and they have two different goals so you can see how with some people where one day like you know what i'm gonna go full out and i'm gonna invest in my career and my education i'm gonna build a family and i'm gonna reach that and they use productivity and motivation and that's wonderful but when they do reach their goals or when they are on their path to reaching their goals some people can feel a bit off they can feel a bit disconnected or why is it that now i'm a doctor i reach my dream job but yet there's still this emptiness there is still this heaviness or this thing that is still lingering inside of me i don't know what that is and again these two things need to go hand in hand then the following question is is it possible and the answer is yes so how do we get there and for me to give you a clear answer we can look at an example and the example that would help you is really look at the monastic community for us is we are excusing ourselves um, from the material world and our focus really is on the spiritual world one of the things that the monastery does so well and this is the wisdom that i think many people can benefit from is the structure of the monastery the daily activity is so routine and mundane i mean i've been here for several years and what we do in day one of the monastery is still what i do years later what this structure consists of is morning chanting we wake up around 4 30 then we go into morning chanting and meditation after that we do our personal chores then we go to uh, alms round and then we do our breakfast after that we have some free time um, and then we go into lunch and then we do a community chore and then we end the day with meditation along with evening chanting with reflection contemplation confession we end our day we sleep in a sea of merit and we start again and is this difficult yes it looks the monk life looks so simple but we say that is simple but it's not easy and i remember my first year or so really was i'm like okay is there anything else besides this like i'm getting bored or sometimes it's very irritating and i'm like i don't want to go to chanting i don't want to do this structure again and it was just so repetitive over and over and over and what i found was that inside myself i was fighting this structure i was fighting my own battles i was fighting my own hindrances of doubts that would arise why, why am i here what am i doing is this all to it i would fight with uh, hindrances of boredom and i'm like <laughs> i don't want to just go sit in a meditation hall i don't want to go do chanting and again still fighting but every single day i would continue to show up and every single day it would get easier and every single day i'm training my mind and make it again in the spiritual life more pure i will continue to keep my precepts to follow the rules in the monastery and again each day it was cleaning me it was an opportunity in that sitting 
in that following the structure where you start to surrender. And in this surrender, you become more content of your environment. You start to accept it and not fight it so much. You start to make more meaning than with a very solid and strict structure with uh, minimal compromising then you're like you know what i'm just gonna go with the flow and then you're craving for things to go somewhere to be something to do something when you don't have the options it slowly starts to subside so this structure for us is it's a training environment that helps us to be grounded and this grounding what that consists of is being then more mindful and mindful means that we're here in this present moment my mind is not with this job with this person with a pet with a relationship but it is simply here and this is a big part of the spiritual life and with that then you start to develop contentment with whatever that is happening in this moment whatever that i have available to me i don't need anything else and our foundation then becomes stronger with each passing hour and each passing day so then coming back to you how do you use this inspiration again i'm not convincing you to come to thailand to be a monk if you would like to wonderful if you want to go to a retreat and practice meditation wonderful if you want to stay home that's good also so uh, no problem so now then combine these two things together know that you still have to make a living and pursue a family or develop a material life because you need to survive but then also at the same time develop a spiritual life that grounds you this is the anchoring point and the advice or the strategy that i would share with you is to develop what i call gutter guards and i was just sharing this with uh, the new monks that came here just two days ago and they were asking me well if you go back into the lay life then how do you balance working a job developing yourself having a family and then also having this grounding practice and i say develop gutter guards and this is the analogy that i use and if anyone is familiar with bowling when you are a brand new bowler what typically happens is that they will raise the side gutter guards and these two metal things protects the gutter so people can have that freedom they can roll the ball and if it hits the side it does not fall off and it keeps them in the game and again they will not uh, go off to the sides so then use this analogy use this concept and develop your spiritual life and what that means is that you're developing a structure so in this structure for you you have to assess your situation i cannot assess that for you you know yourself more than me <laughs> you know yourself more than other people so use wherever you are currently with your lifestyle that you are wanting and know what do you need to be grounded so for you i'll just throw out random examples that uh, you may need to set in place for yourself to be grounded one of the things you can add is just a meditation practice in the morning throughout the day or the last thing in the evening uh, you can add some prayer and meditation time you can add quiet time and schedule that into your day in this 24 hours fill it in for yourself maybe for some of you out there who for grounding purposes to clear your mind you need to journal then every single day 
do a venting journal, write about it. Don't carry the stuff moving forward. Maybe for some of you out there, then um, practice giving uh, to people, giving of your resource, giving of your time. Uh, for some of you out there who are pursuing your own healing, then maybe you can seek with a counselor or a therapist, or if uh, those with some substance abuse issues, then make sure you go to your meetings. Seek with your sponsors. Again, every single person's situation is a bit different. Uh, also, in the monastery, like I said, we do the daily chores. We also do the group chores. Then for you, add that as well, meaning taking time each day, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you can do, then clean your office or clean your house or clean your environment and put this as part of your schedule. Have reflection time, have alone time and quiet time and solitude time. And each person again is different, but write all these things down and know for your specific situation, what do you require to stay sane? <laughs> what do you require to stay grounded? And then put it on a sheet of paper and make it your own schedule. And this should be the framework, this should be the outline and your gutter guard for your life moving forward. And this is actually perfect for the new year because it will protect you and block you. So while you're pursuing this material world, then if anything were to happen, if things don't go your way, changes comes about, obstacles arises, it's okay because you develop that spiritual uh, foundation. This is your anchor that no matter if someone leaves, no matter if things change, I will be okay and I will go inside and ground myself. So hopefully this is a tool that you can use, but some side notes that I would add as you're doing this is really be very gentle and very calm with yourself. We have this tendency of perfection where you feel like you may need to already create the schedule that is perfect and then you're gonna do it and then you won't follow through. So let's not do that for this year, <laughs> but take it very slow, meaning set an outline for yourself, a schedule for yourself that honors this spiritual life and start small. If you wanna do meditation, maybe five minutes maybe 10 minutes in the morning. It's okay, whatever you need, but create the schedule, start to follow it and see, does it fit your lifestyle and is it sustainable? And if it's not, then adapt. If this is too little time, then increase it. If it's too much and your lifestyle does not allow for it, then again, adjust it. But the point for you is really to create this shell that you can follow permanently. In this structure, what we find that it creates is safety. And when you feel safe, then you feel more secure with yourself and everything um, in the outside world just feels more doable. And then to continue with the side note is then I know we have this tendency of reaching our goals. And again, like I said, productivity. But in this case, don't worry about the outcome. But what we're creating is a lifestyle. And this should extend long term. We're not doing this for six months, but we're doing this permanently because this will be your anchor point. So always adapt and adjust and to see that I can do this every single day for a very long time, if not ever. And if that is possible, uh, you will be set and ready to go. 
Another side note is really celebrate your small wins. Every day that you follow through and you're putting in effort and the intention to develop this structure for yourself that secures you and you follow through with it, wonderful. You kept your word today and be proud and keep going. Be very gentle and be very kind with yourself. And then a last side note is once you are starting to do this and for those out there who are watching and you have families, you have your husband or your wife and kids, it's okay, then get them involved. And when the whole family is on the same page, then it usually helps us to um, be successful and carry this through fully. So that was a lot of uh, things that we shared and a lot to take in, but hopefully you can use the wisdom that we practice in the monastery. It's difficult to create this structure and I know sometimes you can have doubt of Ugh, this is boring or this is uncomfortable or it's okay and that's normal. But just know that this structure, once you get it going and you can follow it through every day, this is the thing that will protect you. This is the preventive measure and this will ground you moving forward. So I hope this is helpful. And again, as always, sending you all my blessings from Thailand. So be safe and happy new year. Satu.